Hello everyone and welcome to the second match of the FIDE World Cup semi-finals between Nijat Abasov and Magnus Carlsen. You've seen what happened in the previous round. Magnus has defeated Nijat and now Nijat needs to, uh, to win with the white pieces to force tie breaks and it's not going to be easy. Magnus is having a very very good tournament but so is uh, so is Nijat Abasov. Now let's see who goes into the finals. Uh, will we have tie breaks and who will face the winner of the match? Uh, Karwana Pragnananda. Uh, let's uh, check it out. Nijat has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to d4 and here you are already being treated to something very special knight to f6 knight to f3 d5 and bishop to f4 uh, like against vidid ninja that goes uh, for the london system against magnus carlsen and we've seen magnus play uh, the london we've seen magnus play against the london and uh, well it's always a privilege seeing how the uh, the the best player in the world will face against this uh notorious opening and here we have bishop to f5 going for the symmetrical variation interestingly magnus has faced this symmetrical london setup with both white and black he had it uh, with black against levon aronian for example that game ended in a draw uh, he had it with white against wesley so uh, who he uh, defeated and he also had it um, uh, with white against anish giri also the game ended in a draw so uh, he knows uh, his way around this setup we have e3 e6 knight b to d2 and knight b to d7 so uh, Continuing in this uh, hypersymmetrical uh, variation, we have c4, and now although there is one game in the database where c5 was played, uh, keeping the symmetry, uh, Magnus goes d captures on c4. So he breaks symmetry, we have bishop captures on c4, and now bishop to e7 is a known move, but here we have bishop to d6 by Magnus, and it is now already as of move 7 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so knight to e5 and this is a move you will always face so whenever white plays some sort of a, a queen's pawn opening this knight to e5 move will always happen and of course everyone with the black pieces hates the move uh, because it just uh, requires you to calculate all that much even if you're magnus cross and magnus really took his time here and he spent some 15 minutes on his next move uh, until he decided uh well okay there are basically some some candidates moves you consider you could capture on e5 giving up the bishop you could castle right away or you could put your own knight to e4 uh, much like white put his own knight on e5 and now let's say let's say we play bishop captures on e5 d captures on e5 knight to d5 attacking the bishop let's say bishop goes to g3 and knight to c5 it's a very uh, a very possible way to play also you gain a very nice control over the d3 square for example white can castle and now uh, you, you're gonna castle as well black is perfectly fine here but magnus thinks he can do even better than this he plays knight to e4 and okay now we have a trade uh, we have pawn to f3 knight captures and d2 queen captures and pawn to f6 this this is basically why magnus spent uh 15 to 20 minutes calculating this and whenever your opponent will play in the knight on e5 you will also have to do this because it's uh if you can play f6 kick away the knight and be okay then uh, you've solved all of your opening uh, issues and if not you're just gonna blunder the game so knight captures on d7 queen captures and pawn to e4 now chases away the bishop we have bishop to g6 and rook to d1 uh, we have bishop captures on f4 magnus going for further trades uh queen captures and now bishop to f7 remember magnus only needs a draw uh, to qualify for the finals of the fide world cup whereas abasov needs to win this in order to force tie breaks with king to f2 very nice move by abasov the king will be extremely safe here the pawns are keeping him safe and the rook can now come into the game we have queen to c6 putting pressure on the bishop bishop to b3 and queen to b6 now aligning the queen nicely with the king also getting ready to castle with tempo as this will put more pressure on the d4 pawn and if the bishop moves you are also putting pressure on b2 so the queen uh, is uh most certainly excellently placed on b6 we have queen to e3 and now queen side castles of course the uh, d4 pawn is already nicely defended so you don't need to worry but you should start a doubling up on the d file magnus will do the same rook to d7 we have rook h to d1 and of of course rook h to d8 and now bishop back to c4 uh we have pawn to c5 by magnus uh, not worried about uh, moving pawns in front of his king as it does put pressure on the d pawn and this forces the pawn to be advanced further so pawn to d5 we have e captures on d5 and now, while you could uh, trade bishops here, uh, Abbasov wants as, as much material on the board as possible. He really doesn't want this to fizzle out into an early draw. E captures on d5 and now king to b8. So here, when you're uh, when you're playing in uh, such a tournament uh, uh, where you are, for example, facing Magnus Carlsen uh, and you're down uh, by a full point, uh, <laughs> it's uh, weird but because usually when you face Magnus Carlsen, you don't mind the draw. But here, it just, I mean... Uh, although you don't mind a draw against Magnus Carlsen, you really need to beat him 
uh, if you want to advance. And situation on the clock here, okay, pretty similar. Uh, Abbasov had a little less than 40 minutes on the clock, some 39 minutes, and Magnus had uh, 30 minutes. We have pawn to a3. Abbasov wants to strike with pawn to b4 because how else do you get um, a hold of the black king? And queen to d6 now. Uh, we have pawn to g3 as the queen captures on h2 was the threat. And now rook to e7. Magnus grabs um, the open e file for his rook. We have queen back to c3 and now h5. Preparing pawn to h4. Uh, or maybe even pawn to h3, but probably h4 and capturing on g3. We have pawn to b4. Abbaso finally plays it. It's time to go after the black king. And now Magnus could go for something like rook to c7 to align the rook with the white queen, but he goes for pawn to h4. Just going after Abbaso's king. We have b captures on c5, queen captures on c5 with check. Queen to d4 blocking and Magnus plays h captures on g3. This comes with check, h captures and queen captures on d4. So trading of the queens rook captures and rook to c7 and this is the position equal material uh bishops of the same color and the two pairs of rooks each uh which means um it's uh, probably a draw and uh, unless you, you manage to really squeeze something out. Uh, Abbasov 35 minutes on the clock, uh, Magnus 27 minutes on the clock. But uh, this game is going to a very, very special place. As you'll see, we have pawn to g4, uh, rook to c5. We have pawn to a4 and now bishop to e8. Now Magnus no longer needs to attack this pawn as this pawn is now presented as a target. We have bishop to b3 defending it and rook to c3. And now the rook here is um, uh, uh, quite powerful. So, of course, Abbasov has to trade a pair of rooks to get rid of it. We have rook captures, rook captures. And now, uh, once uh, one a pair of rooks has been traded off, it's safe to bring the king into the game. King c7, rook to e3, and now bishop to g6. Uh, of course, you cannot move the rook from the e-file with that bishop on e8. So, bishop to g6. And now, pawn to g5, creating some weaknesses here, uh, trying to double up the, the g-pawn. Uh, we have rook to e8, offering a rook trade, and here we have g captures, g captures, rook captures on e8, bishop captures, and now king to e3. So we have this endgame with the bishops of the same color, but it is only Abbasov with the pass pawn. He has the pass d-pawn, and he, of course, will try to push it all the way to victory. If Magnus gets a free move in, he can also create a pass d-pawn uh, on, on the queen side. So pawn to a5, sorry, pawn to a5, locking that pawn uh, on a light square. So uh, the, the uh, white's bishop on b3 is stuck there defending it. And now king to d4. We have king to d6 and now pawn to f4. Uh, is there a way for Abbasov to create some threats here? Uh, let's see. We have bishop to h5 by Magnus and now king to e4. Uh, sorry, king to e4. We have bishop to g4 and now bishop back to c2. We have king to c5 and bishop back to b3. Uh, we have bishop to h3 and now bishop back to c2. We have bishop to d7 and now bishop to d1. So it doesn't seem like uh, there's all that much to do here. Uh, king to c4 and now bishop to e2 with check. We have king to c5 and bishop back to d1. Uh, we have pawn to b6 by Magnus and now comes bishop to c2. Uh, nine minutes for Abbasov, 15 minutes for Magnus, and okay, time control has been reached, so uh, it's uh, it means they've again spent uh, quite a lot of time uh, getting to this position. We have king to c4, bishop to d3 with check, king to b4, going after the pawn, and bishop to c2. Magnus just repeats, king to c3, bishop to d1, and now king to c4. We have bishop e2 check, king to b4, and now bishop to d1. King to c3, and here Abbasov plays it. Pawn to d6. And now, uh, the problem is, if you play a particular move, you are dead lost here. And not just a particular move. There is only one move that doesn't lose the game for Magnus, and uh, it's incredible uh, how, how, how easy... Uh, it is to, to miss this move. So uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the only move that doesn't lose the game for Magnus while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on always thinking about the b4 square. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, it is not king to b4, it is king to c4. But you would only come to re this realization if you first thought about king to b4 and calculated that it loses the game. Now, king b4 looks very natural because the bishop is stuck here guarding the a4 pawn. Uh, the problem is it's not. Look at this beautiful move, bishop g4. 
and now uh, Magnus would be completely lost. You cannot trade bishops because then f5 and the bishop can no longer control the d7 square. You're just going to promote this pawn to a queen. And of course, if bishop to c6 check, then you're just going to play king f5. And if king to c5, you will just play king to e6, uh, controlling everything here. Bishop captures an a4, but now king to e7. And after bishop to c6, you will advance the pawn. Bishop captures, and this is now completely winning um, uh, for white. Bishop captures on d7. Okay. Uh, you can start pushing those queenside pawns, uh, but it doesn't matter. F5, you're going to play pawn to a4, king captures uh, pawn to a3, and now you're just going to stop the pawn, and that's it. There's no more way to do this. You're just going to move the king and queen this pawn. White is much, much faster here. So after d6, Magnus uh, first thought about king to b4, as one always should. He rejected it because he, it loses, and then he played king to c4, which, of course, you guys also found after deciding king to b4 doesn't work. Uh, and now uh, he does not lose the game. But again, you have to be very, very, very precise. Abbasov plays bishop to g4, the absolute best move. And again, you cannot trade. If you trade f5 and uh, Magnus is lost here, but Magnus finds the only move, bishop to c6 with check. And now it's a bit different because now uh, if you go king to f5, uh, the king is already on c4. It's not on b4. So you can go king to d5 and stop the white king from infiltrating and now it's a draw. King captures on f6, king captures on d6. That's all there is to it. So after bishop to c6 check, king to e3 was played. But now Magnus captures on a4. Okay, he will have to give up the bishop. But now uh, the white king is much, much further away. And he will not be able to uh, get rid of the, the, the f6 pawn, which is on a dark square in time to, to advance the past f pawn. So d7, bishop captures, bishop captures, and now pawn to b5. And okay, now the position is equal, but still you have to play this out perfectly. And Abbaso really went into a deep thing here. He had to see if there was anything more to play for. And he played king to d2. Uh, we have pawn to b4 by Magnus. We have bishop to e6 with check, king to d4 now. We have pawn to f5, uh, and of course, pawn to a4. We have king to c2, and now king to e4. Uh, bishop to d7 goes after the a4 pawn, king to e5 now. Of course, if you uh, capture, then the king captures on f5. So king to d3, and now pawn to a3. We have king to c2, pawn to a2, king to b2, and pawn to b3. Of course, you cannot take Magnus's pawn here, because then a1 becomes a queen. Uh, so here, bishop to e6 was played, and now we have king to e4. And now Magnus said, I just don't care uh, anymore. Whatever you play, I'm just going to move my king to e5 and e4, and that's it. It's going to be a draw. Uh, you know, by by uh, ha both of us having nothing to do. So Abbasov agreed. He played bishop captures on b3, and now everything gets traded off. a1 queen, this comes with check. King captures on a1. King captures on f5, and now bishop to c2 check. We have king to e5, king to b1, and now pawn to f5. Abbasov captured on f5, and here it was in this position on move 74 that Nietzsche, Abbasov, and Magnus Carlsen agreed to a draw, as there is nothing more to be done here. It is basically a draw by insufficient material. Uh, you know, okay, uh, it'd, be, it'd be okay if Magnus captured Eden, but still it's it's a draw by insufficient material, which means that as Magnus won the first game and the second game ended in a draw, Magnus Carlsen is the first uh, finalist of the FIDE World Cup to, uh, 2023. Uh, and he will wait for the winner of the match, Pregnananda versus uh, Fabiana Caruana. Uh, this is the first time Magnus ever reached the, the finals of the FIDE World Cup. He was knocked out uh, uh, to young Shishtov Duda in the semifinals of 2021. Now he reaches the finals. Can he take it all the way and win the only tournament he never won at the FIDE World Cup? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, will it be Prague? Will it be Fabi? Uh, whoever whoever it is. Well, uh, since, okay, I mean, I, I want both of them to win. Of course, uh, best luck to, to everyone uh, who already came this far. But he already faced Fabi in so many uh, great top tier competitions. He even played a World Chess Championship match against Fabi. Uh, you know, maybe it'd be it'd be it'd be more more uh, of a, of a not, not a challenge, but something for for Prague to aspire to. You know, if he, if he qualifies for the finals. But I would be I'm I will be thrilled whoever qualifies. So you know, uh, really happy to enjoy that with you guys. Uh, but yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see how the other uh, games um, uh, finished, or maybe they're they're already over. I can just check quickly if you guys are interested in the answer. Uh, yes. Okay. So it has ended. I will uh, mention it now. So for those of you who are not interested in the result of the Prague Fabi game, do not listen to what I'm about to say. Uh, it has ended in a draw, which means tomorrow we will have tie breaks between Fabiana Coruana and Pragnananda.
So yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Kay Osek, uh, Thomas Hoyt, Wives and Lovers, uh, Andres, uh, and Robert Blum for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup until it finishes. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.